Well, thank you for uh, hosting us for this panel. I think we have a very interesting uh, topic, uh, just to give quick context. Uh, so yeah, everybody can hear me and it's just a nice way we are sitting, perfect. So we all live in a multi-screen world which consumers switch between TV, mobile, DOH, laptops and many more screens. It thus becomes very, very important for marketers to understand, can they integ integrate these consumer journeys across their screens and achieve these brand objectives in short term or long term? While TV, whether linear or connected TV, continues to play a key role, where does mobile, DOH, and these newer screens that suddenly advertisers are focusing in fit in? And what about these existing channels? How do we connect these disconnected worlds of TV and digital? So with that, I think we have a very diverse panel. We have some very exciting brands and some very exciting people on this panel. And probably I'll just dig into the question straight up because this panel is called TV plus digital. So how do we answer the question usually when it comes to brands for each one of you? TV pe ad dikhaya, hua kya? And how do you do that in your set of uh, advertising memos? Let's start with you, Samir. Uh, thanks, Nikhil. TV pe ad chalaya, hua kya? TV pe ad chalaya, to immediately website visits aane start ho This is the reality of the world we're living in. I think what happens uh, very commonly with us and people around us is that whenever we're watching TV, it is no longer undivided attention that we are giving to television. We are constantly fiddling with our phones. We are WhatsApping our friends and colleagues. We are answering work emails. We are looking at Instagram reels and a bunch of other things. So we're always distracted with phones. On the positive side, uh, the phone is completely unengaged because your primary medium of entertainment at that point in time is the big screen, the television. So if, let's say, for example, uh, you're a digital brand, which we are, and uh, a consumer likes your proposition through advertising, they don't really have to wait for their next store visit to respond to your communication. They might just pick up their phone and log on to your website and download your app which is exactly what we see. We actually plot the spot data of our TV campaigns along with our website traffic data, A, uh, to figure out what's happening after we're running ads, like you asked, but also to dig deeper and figure out, okay, what components of the media plans are working better than the others. For example, what channels are working better, what time bands are working better, what days of the week are working better, and also what creatives are working better. So, uh, yeah, to summarize, I think, uh, when we advertise on television, uh, we also, apart from the long-term brand building benefits, which is believed to be the strong suit of television, we also get immediate ROI. So it also acts as a good performance medium, apart from being a long-term brand building medium. Oh, fantastic. I'll just sort of dig in before I move to the next panelist. I think Policy Bazaar at the end of the day started with .com, right? I mean, you're an app-first uh, ecosystem. You're a digital native company. And when you look at balancing your... Uh, media budgets between digital and TV. Obviously, TV you cannot isolate. You're still a digital first brand, but TV is where impact is. We firmly believe that. Are you seeing that consistently changing over the years? Because I think for all of us, there's always going to be a pre-COVID and post-COVID way of looking at data and analysis, right? And I think two years is a fairly long time to regimentalize certain habits of consumers. Is there, is, has there been a shift in the way you're looking at media planning from your perspective, Samir? Uh, to some extent, yes, but largely it has been fairly similar. See, there's a saying, right, if it ain't broke, why fix it? So TV has been very consistently delivering for us. To give you some sense of how active we are on television, we do at least one, maybe two campaigns every month. We are active on television 200 plus days a year. Uh, we also happen to spend 90% of, more than 90% of our brand budgets on television. This, I think, uh, is, is, the, is, 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 is proof enough that we believe in the power of the medium. And when I uh, you know, talk about the power of the medium, I am not isolating uh, linear TV uh, in this example. I'm talking about the power of big screen. Uh, you know, going forward, maybe we'll also touch upon uh, linear versus CTV, etc. But I genuinely believe that uh, uh, advertising on big screen uh, cannot be compared to, let's say, adver advertising on much smaller screens like uh, mobile or tabs, etc. 
at least in terms of uh, the immediate ROI. So uh, to answer your question, I, it hasn't changed entirely, but what we have started doing is we have started cutting out some of our non-performing components of the linear media plan and plowing that money on connected TVs. So that we've been doing very consistently for the last one and a half years. So I think a lot of times people debate about connected TVs versus linear television. I don't think uh, it's a binary. I think both of them will coexist at least in the next few years to come. And they will complement each other. Whatever is the uh, less performing uh, flab in a linear TV media plan will get cut and that money, uh, I, I see that being plowed uh, first into connected TVs and then maybe to other mediums. Superb. Thanks, Samir. I think let's move to a very interesting category. Pradnya, for you, Samsonite, a um, creme la creme of travel accessory. And obviously, you're a very visible brand on television or offline. How are you looking at this digital world plus the linear world of TV evolving for your particular brand? Yeah, so uh, see, let's look at the overall, the penetration of today, the connected TV. And it would be just around 4%, OK? For Samsonite audience, it would be around 30, 35%. But overall, it is 4% TV is 90% in urban metros. Yeah, so, but how beautifully, because of the way the government is building the infrastructure and we as a advertisers also building the infrastructure post-COVID, understanding the importance of digital, I see that it's surely becoming like, a, you know, 40, 50% uh, in maybe around seven to eight years, yeah. But what we have, uh, you know, recently saw the success of connected TV, what I would like to say is we've reached out to almost 25% of Samsonite affluent audience through FIFA, KBC, Sony Leave, you know, advertisement through connected TV because our audience is mainly those who are having 40,000 plus uh, devices, you know, and that's how we could map the data. Connected TV is giving that particular data. So power of uh, what you said on a big screen, whichever screen it is today, you can see whether it is a small tab or a 40 inch TV or a 65 inch TV. And we've looked at the data that 65 inch TV person, whether he's come on my website and tried buying anything, you know, that is the amazing journey which Connected TV is giving you, okay? What we did on an airport advertisement, we had given a scan to watch a film. I'm sure like very few watched it by scanning it. But those who scanned, we mapped their personal because those who are at an airport are using their personal Wi-Fi. So when they are at home, they are also using their personal Wi-Fi sometimes, sometimes or the, Wi-Fi being at of Geo or somebody else, okay? So we map this data and we are retargeting them through connected TV, okay? So I think there's a humongous uh, slicing of the data one can do, especially for our category where we are into the affluent segment. Even for American tourists also, we are trying to do this. Uh, but TV versus connected TV, I think TV would be a lot of reach and connected would be reach along with the engagement and the reacher data. No, fantastic. I think you touched upon a very interesting point. Sometimes it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And for connected TV, probably what you need to understand, is at least for a category like yours, I mean, you got a very sh small audience base as compared to TV but it packs a very potent punch. Basically, you know the people that you're targeting who are probably the guys who understand the usage of internet across their mobile. They know how to put a Wi-Fi password on their TV screen. You know which TV screen that you want to target. You understand this might be a 65-inch TV screen user living in a certain locality, has subscription across or not subscription across certain OTTs kind of content that he watches and suddenly here you go. I mean, you are not solving for the diversity of channels that you have to try your mix on. You already have it in front of you and you know exactly, uh, probably these are the creme la creme customers that you probably want to target. Yeah, we just ran the campaign only for the Pedder Road and a Malabar Hill kind of audience through connected TV, you know. Well, people in Malabar Hill, it was her, just so you know. So, uh, let's, let's move on to the man 
who is one of has one of the most visible presence on linear or probably any uh, uh, connected TV as well in recent times. Mutual fund sahi hai. I think I can vouch if there is somebody in this audience that can raise their hand and hasn't heard of this campaign. I'll be very surprised. But how are you bridging the gap and how are you actually not bridging the gap, probably building newer bridges uh, towards your digital plus uh, TV reach thought process? Because you obviously appeal to a very large part of the audience set. You want mutual funds to be a part of everyone's life in the country. So like our campaign is to create awareness for mutual funds, so we reach out to yeah. Can you hear me better? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for us, the whole objective is to create awareness of the category. So we use each and every medium that is available to us to send out our message. Uh, for us, uh, TV gives the reach, uh, digital, I mean, for like for everyone, uh, not just for us, TV. Uh, TV gives us the reach and then digital gives us, uh, TV gives us reach and trust, I would say, uh, because we are, a, uh, you know, in the business of money, of taking your money, managing it and hoping to give you more returns. Uh, so TV helps us create that reach and trust and digital helps us to create that reminder medium, recall, uh, engagement and then get into their consideration set. So you know like you asked TV pe ad dekha uske baad kya, uske baad usko bhazar baar ad dikhaya, usko bula bhai idhar a, idhar dekh, ye, ye website hai, yaan pe aake samaj, teri bhasha mein samaj, alright. And then you hope that he will go to some uh, mutual fund and uh, you know start his SIP. So for us, it's a, it, it's a long journey, uh, like for any other brand, but for us, it is all the more difficult. And when we use each medium, uh, you know, to their strength uh, and try to convert that into concentration for us, uh, for our category. Very thoughtful, I think, um, you know, when people obviously look at TV and being an ex-marketer, I think usually, I always believe that it's almost like a post-mortem, right? You spent on media, now you have to do a post-mortem, the body is there, whether it resulted in good or bad, it's still a post-mortem, right, eventually. But even if you look at connected TV with so many OEMs, OTTs, everybody's stepping into that space, eventually if you're not still connecting the journey, usually we are very happy looking at BLIs and saying, hey, good job, done. You know, the BLI has scored well, over uh, 200 respondents that have said uh, they have a high recall, but I think today technologies exist which can actually connect mutual fund sahi hai, link it to the consumer journey, make sure that he clicks, doesn't click, follow up to your ad, eventually lead him to the website, even track from the website, whether he ended up registering himself, buying something, and I think which is where there's a clear differentiation, but I think very interesting point, very interesting point, Puneet. Let's, let's move to uh, Shilpa. Uh, traditional, the category is growing, super important. I think India is learning about the importance of that category. What's your take and how, as a brand, or as a category, I would say, are you looking at these two worlds existing, especially for a country like ours, which is developing, which is growing at a phenomenal pace in terms of digital penetration. Most people don't know we are the second highest app downloading country in the world. It comes as a surprise to most people, but we also got population on our side, just so you know, those numbers are also on our side. But we are a fairly well penetrated internet country. And when you look at us, we also have the cheapest sort of data plans across the world. We are probably the top 10. When you look at your media planning or your marketing planning, how do you try to collate the worlds together? Uh, I think a couple of interesting perspectives one must be uh, aware of. One is I, I represent a category which is most underpenetrated in the country. 1% of GDP is the amount of insurance that gets sold. So look at it from the other side, 99% of the population is not yet insured great upside. Now let's look at the role of media and the role a brand can play in the context of the category. As we understand, television and for people who've been in media planning and advertisers have for a very long time understood, TV is a laid back medium, digital is a hyperactive medium. Connected television is a sweet spot between the two and as marketers you need to be nuanced about what is the role of each of these devices in your overall life and hence the opportunity for advertisers to create some kind of impact. I used to work for a large banking uh, brand where we used to ensure that whenever we did TV print outdoor, we used to have the outdoors very close to the chairman's home so that we would assure him that don't worry, when we've advertised, uh, we've been there and we've got the money for, the, for the, the returns for the money done. But what digital has allowed us to do is put a lot of accountability in the way we spend. And I think connected television gives you that sweet spot. 
for anybody in the audience who used a Facebook dashboard for marketers, which is a planning tool, the kind of enormity of attributes available which allows you to get a size of your audience, their segments, micro segments, make cohorts, understand lifestyle, all of that beauty never existed in the traditional TV world. Now, if you combine the nuances that digital allows you to leverage along with the medium like television, which is one to many, you have a great opportunity to create very compelling advertising provided you understand what's the play for it. It's like many years ago, we are in the 5G world today, when 3G was being launched, I remember being on a panel where one of my co-panelists was a BSNL guy and people were asking, why do we need 3G? As an advertiser, why do we need to be there? The gentleman smiled and said, it's available, it's yours to have. We're not going around telling people what you can do. If you feel relevance of that medium, go ahead and leverage it. But the point is, for people like us who are so attention deficient, if there is an opportunity to use a large screen medium, knowing fully well it's one too many, in a hyper-connected world, the kind of challenges it puts to advertisers and marketers are very different from what we saw 10 years ago. So the way you profile your audiences, the role that that medium plays, and your opportunity to create compelling content to cater to that need of the audience will be the biggest game changer. Otherwise, you're one among so many who advertise. So I think as a brand, today we are very largely metro and city-centric, but as part of our growth plans, we want to go more interiors. If you look at the penetration of CTV and interior markets, may not be as good, but maybe it becomes a sweet spot in giving us the opportunity to talk to the affluent segment within those geographies using this medium. Now, if you understand this demographic and psychographic interplay, maybe this is the medium for you from an expansion standpoint. Everywhere else, you will always have a TV plus digital and interconnected devices as your top of the line plan. But unless you understand what each medium's role is in your overall marketing plan, you may not get the bang for the buck. One last point is, TV, for all you know, has always been maximize impact. Digital has always been minimize loss or wastage. These are two ends of the spectrum. If we're able to very clearly articulate what the role for CTV is, I think we're in a good place. Oh, I think very interesting insight, Shilpa. I think on that, the holding outside chairman's house, I think we've all been there. So I resonate. It's fine. We're, we've all been there. But I think good absolute takeaway is one size fits all. I think it doesn't work in today's world at all. Actually, uh, you know, a lot of traditional brands uh, fundamentally also believe that they understand their consumers really, really well. But sometimes I question them, yes, you do, you spend disproportionate amount of money in understanding your consumer, but are you understanding your consumer from an offline lens, how we traditionally used to evaluate consumers? And are you connecting the dots and saying their digital journeys might be the same? Actually, that's not the case at all. I mean, on your an average Indian user or female user probably has close to 26 apps on our mobile. They'll be very surprised. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube are probably five or six of them. There are so many other apps that they're going through. India has an ecosystem, actually not just India, most of the countries developing and developed. The gaming ecosystem, they have the same amount of female users as compared to male. Not even fashion has that kind of, even fashion has 70-30 split male-female, but this has got 50-50. So I think our Inhibitions of how we look at consumer journeys on digital screens are very different from how we understand offline. So with that, I think I want to move to a very interesting gentleman sitting on the fag end of this uh, table. And I think he brings a lot of knowledge in terms of uh, content and content creation. He has been the pioneer for creating some of the most popular uh, TV soaps that we have seen across the years. Anuj, you're now with Dangal and you're creating content, uh, which is exciting. It's free to air right now. But you clearly, I'm sure, are watching how OTTs are clearly just going mad. Each large television ecosystem has produced an OTT, a very successful one. Uh, most CROs are saying probably the future of revenues could also be OTTs versus the channel distribution or advertising revenue from channel distribution. What are your views from a content standpoint? And do you find that space a little bit more liberal and probably more easy accessible and hence largely growing? Um, you're referring to the CTV syndrome. Well, a lot of times people do get confused on, I have an OTT, I don't need to spend on CTV. Actually, it's not true. Uh, CTV 
OTT can be a subset of CTV, but yeah. CTV okay. is a TV. But what okay. are you looking at? For okay, okay. So uh, first, some some basic facts. Uh, you know, one is of course that uh, um, if you look at US today, okay, there's 110 million uh, households that uh, have the CTV. There's been a 50% increase in advertising revenue to almost 13 billion dollar in 2021 compared to 20. So one thing is is very definite, and I think of course we are a little behind in terms of that percentage, but uh, uh, it is something that we are headed towards and therefore it's a reality that even as content creators you have to be very sensitive towards. Um, so I think, um, uh, you see, so far as uh, the regular television is concerned, uh, we all know the rules of the game, uh, both from an advertiser's perspective as content creators, you know, in our market largely soaps and comedy are uh, in the GC uh, genre popular and um, mass brands uh, you know, of course, advertise on, on television. Where I see uh, an opportunity, uh, uh, of course, over and above uh, whatever the traditional medium, over and above whatever television is already offering uh, in the CTV space, um, is manifold. You know, one, of course, is that uh, uh, you get to know, as uh, Shilpa nicely said, a combination of psychographic and demographic in terms of the audiences. You can do target bombing, you know, very selective, sharp, uh, audiences, um, they are connected uh, on devices, so you know exactly who's watching, you know, and all of that. Also, uh, I think there is a lot of opportunity for small businesses because sometimes, uh, you know, here in CTV, you can approach only a local market. You know, a Bhagwan Katwi Center suddenly has an opportunity to create a business model, you know, which is cost effective and yet can reach very specific targeted. Uh, you know, uh, audiences and doesn't have to advertise on national television, right? Uh, the same thing holds true for the content creators in terms of multiplying his number of advertisers because if along with the regular big guys, all these small guys come on board for your CTV offering, you know, obviously, you know, one. Second, I also see a very uh, great opportunity in the digital space in terms of, uh, you know, curating specific content to block competition. I'll tell you what I mean by that. For example, if you have uh, created a bunch of um, very interesting television sitcoms, right? Uh, and that entire series you have named as uh, Har Ghar Kuch Kehta Hai. So you have blocked all other paint brands, you know, by curating that specifically for Asian paints. Uh, so, and because it stays in the library and you are watching it again and again and again, it kinds of stays embedded in your mind as a brand. You know, those are unique opportunities that the space kind of uh, throws up for you. We at Dangal also feel that we have a very unique platform for advertisers because we are, um, we have a Dangal Play, yeah, our new, uh, you know, um, uh, app. Uh, and we have um, original content being curated for the FT audience. And we are the market leaders in that. Uh, in soaps and now we are kicking off in comedy. So if you look at Dangal Play as a combination, you know, you have the OTT viewers who will come in there, you will have the FT audiences who will come in there. So it's a very, very unique platform, even from that perspective. So hopefully we'll have a OTT play on your channel soon. Of course. Of course. Let's make that weightage a little bit more serious. Um, TRAI data, 9 million wired subscribers added in the last two years. 9 million wired subscribers added in the last two years. We were all in COVID and if we were all working, if you didn't have Wi-Fi, I don't know how you are working. So that's called regimentalization. So the number of Wi-Fi is increased in the ecosystem, hence the usage of connected TV. Mean broadband speeds, this is Ookla, increased by 20.5%. 20 5G revolution is on the cards, everybody's talking about it. Growth of smart TV sales increased by 93%. Uh, the total number of TVs sold in quarter three 2022 was all smart TVs, close to 93% of them are smart TVs. I don't know what were the other seven. I don't know when was the last time we all saw a box TV, probably in an ad somewhere. But devices that are accessible to make your TV into a smart TV are less than 3,000 rupees. You can also just click a button on Flipkart, Amazon, any of these sites, get your TV installed the next day. And these are probably all these factors. And there are close to 45 plus OTT channels today. That means the availability of content, you know, that you want to probably watch and at a price point that you want to watch 
is quite accessible. Hence, marketers need to take notice. Like I said, it's small, but it surely packs a punch. Uh, we have limited time, and I think a couple of questions that I would like to ask at least this marketing panel is, what do you think when you think of creating and measuring impact? Just a broad question, and when you look at combining the force of offline and digital, where do you really feel, and I think we live in an era today where some of the brands are digital first. They never went on TV at all. And they are fairly large recognizable brands because the consumer, India has got 700 million internet users, so probably we have a very high internet penetration and I think smartphone is not really a tier one, tier two phenomena. Everybody has a smartphone. You know, if you go to the smallest village, they have a smartphone. The success of TikTok was, obviously in India, was a big testament of that. They did 210 million monthly active users in one year, what probably a lot of brands could not. And this is pure smartphone penetration. How are you guys looking at your media plans? And Shilpa, you can go first. I, I wanted to share a quick anecdote, just as an illustrative example. I have a father who's 88. Uh, what he looks forward to in an average week is going to the bank. Because for him, it's a day away from home and it's a day to meet a lot of people because he doesn't get to do that otherwise. He loves to, the, to go to the bank and get his passbook updated or get a request for a checkbook. I have been a banker all my life. And whenever there was this huge temptation to digitize everything, I was always guided by this principle. For people of that age group, going to the bank is something to look forward to. That part of the ecosystem must continue to remain the way it is. There is no reason to change that. There is the other end of the spectrum who wants everything on the digital format. So I have a son who's 19 who tells me, why should we have to choose between this or that. Can it not be this and that? That's true for advertisers too. Why do I need to choose between this or that? Why are there trade-offs? Depending on who I'm servicing or who I'm serving, if I'm serving an 80-year-old, maybe the choice may still be traditional television. If I'm talking to an audience of today who is so hard-pressed for time, and time is a function of priority, I may choose more new age mediums to be able to make some, some semblance of what they want. So I think it's a good mix of what works, keeping in mind who we want to serve. If a significant chunk of your primary audience is glued to one format, that will necessarily mean higher weightage in your media plan. The long tail may still continue, but in my mind, both will happily coexist. Anyone else? Puneet, Samir, Pandya? Yeah, I mean, it's the audience we go for and not a particular medium. And each medium has its own limitations. Like uh, my 80% of the audience, if I'm looking at is only the, you know, the domestic or the international travels, we have a huge presence in at airport. But just being at the airport never gave us the kind of uh, sales which we saw now because of our holistic campaign. Like uh, we achieved 25% of our yearly business sale in just one month, you know? So because we had a holistic presence on TV, connected TV, airport, cinema and everything. So, and each medium like a cinema can give you like a huge impact while uh, digital can give you like really the eye view of detailing and TV can give you the reach or airport can give you both you know, engagement, impact and reach. So each medium has its own advantage and one should use it from the customer or audience point of view and take that call. Yeah, what is relevant for my consumer, yeah, basically. At the end of the day, what is it that my consumer is consuming? And if I want to reach that, what is the optimal way of doing it? Samir, Puneet, any POVs measuring impact and chaining scale? Uh, so, uh, see, not, not so much about impact, but uh, definitely about scale. I think uh, the last two minutes, uh, you know, uh, the panel has spoken about, uh, it's mostly about the audience that you go for, etc. cetera. Uh, e, I come from a brand where uh, the consumer, the average buyer tends to be slightly older versus, let's say, uh, the average age of buyers for a lot of digital first brands. So if, let's say, for example, you're targeting 16 to 25 year olds, you're targeting the so-called youth or now uh, Gen Z, it is maybe all right and adequate for you to stick to digital alone, at least till a certain amount of scale. But if you're already, uh, you're also catering to a lot of mature audiences in the mix, 
you have to go on television. It is still the single largest reach medium in the country. And, uh, you know, I'd make a last point about, uh, we've, we've spoken about, uh, you know, the growth of connected TV, etc. It is bound to grow. We, we cannot stop it. It is on a growth trajectory and it will continue to grow. The numbers uh, may be debated upon, okay, it'll reach this milestone in a year, in two years, etc. But it's growing and it's an established fact. And at some point in time, uh, you know, I, I, I can't uh, put a number of years to that, but it will possibly be close to as big as television also in India. But I think in terms of uh, advertiser interest, I see uh, fundamentally two ways, uh, uh, you know, advertiser interest on CTV growing. A, like I initially pointed out, a lot of flab in the linear uh, TV media plan is being cut, will get cut, and that money will be flowed to CTV. And B, also, I think uh, earlier when people used to plan digital video campaigns, they used to start with planning for mobile first, uh, deploying monies there, and then whatever is left over, they might just add some bit of connected TVs. Ki achha, you know, token ke liye 10% bhi dal do. Innovation. Innovation to zada nahi ho to be honest. But yeah, the, the, it used to have a token presence in the digital video media, media plan. I think that's changing. And uh, what we have been doing, and I see going forward a lot of people will also start doing that, is that particularly in the digital video space, as an advertiser, we start deploying monies on connected TVs first, and then whatever is left in the kitty, we then think of what we can do on the mobile device, because we know that uh, even within the digital space, while the audience may or may not be somewhat the same, they react very differently to a message coming from a big screen. It is a sound that fills the entire room, and there's a lot of co-viewing happening also, right? And when you are sitting with other people of your family, uh, let's say having dinner and watching something, you do have conversations about it. Uh, the recall is far higher. On mobile, it is very easy for you to sort of switch off mentally, but it, it's not extremely very easy. It's, the sound is filling up the entire room. So yeah, I, I see within the digital space also, it, uh, connected TV competing increasingly with the mobile device also for the share of monies. We are running out of time, so I think I'll just wrap it up. I think we have one last thing that I wanted to do, and it's called the rapid fire round. Obviously, I'm not going to do it as good as the man who does it really well. And I don't think E4M is having those fancy hampers, but you'll have to just live with it. Um, I'm going to go with you, and these questions are out of syllabus, so I'll probably put you in a spot. Future of your network's revenues five years down the line. Offline, advertising revenues, or online? Very robust. Sorry? Very robust. Okay. Shilpa, where did you see India versus uh, New Zealand where Shubman Gill scored 200 on a CTV or the Star Sports channel? Always CTV. Always CTV. Always. Interesting answers. People make notes. Puni, chat GPT replacing marketing creativity or it's just a fad which we just should ignore right now? Too early to comment, uh, but I would say it should be supportive. Okay. Pradhya? All mediums will coexist, all platforms will coexist. You said mobile first, it is still very much important, you know. So you can't have CTV money going to mobile first or mobile first money going to the CTV. Each has a different objective, so all will coexist. It will become an advertiser's jobs really very difficult. Fantastic. Very rapid. Last, Samir, you can't skip it. You're a part of the panel. So everybody is talking about global recession. Are they seeing going to be marketing budget cuts this year for Policy Bazaar? It's going to be the usual. Um, so especially for the period that we are in, this is Q4 of the financial year. This is the time a lot of people buy insurance. Uh, we're being very, very aggressive with our marketing and we are seeing very, very positive consumer response also. Thankfully, these are positive signs also for the economy. So let's hope this continues. Hope people are taking notes. Plan to connect after this meeting. That's us. I think we are up by five minutes, but thank you. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out after the panel or connect. Thank you.